Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and today we're talking about the number one reason for weight gain. If you gained weight and you don't understand, today's video is just for you. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up and if you're new or you haven't yet subscribed, I would love to have you here. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell next to it so you never miss a single upload. I upload every Tuesday and Thursday, so you definitely don't want to miss out. Check out the description box down below for nutrition coaching. I offer personalized to you macros and calories, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching to help you reach your goals. Links, discounts to all my favorite healthy things are also down in that description box. So let's jump into the number one reason you're gaining weight. to 60 or even 50 years ago, on average, Americans are burning less calories in a given day. The result of this is 42% of the American population was shown to be obese in the year of 2018. That's actually 12% more than just 18 years earlier. The calorie imbalance is the number one problem and the number one reason for this weight gain. Genetics do play a role, but at the end of the day, it's how many calories you're eating versus how many calories you're burning that are going to lead you to losing weight, gaining weight, and even maintaining your weight. A lot of this weight gain and people struggling to lose weight and keep it off is because of the foods that we're choosing. As we move into the 20th century, the 21st century, our food choices are very different than they were centuries ago. We eat way more calorie dense processed foods and less whole real food. And we sit a lot. Let's be honest, the majority of the population has careers or positions in which they find themselves sitting at a desk a lot. Or maybe you have a more physically active job and when you come home from work, you just sit and watch TV because you're so tired from having that more physically involved position. On average, teenagers sit 8.2 hours a day and adults sit on average 6.4 hours per day, which is a full hour more than both of these age groups did just 15 years ago. Because we're sitting more and not burning as many more calories, the amount of obesity, weight gain, and just overall unhealthy lifestyle has drastically increased over the last 10 to 20 years. I mean, let's be honest, centuries ago when people were foraging for food, they were very active in finding the food and consuming very little calories because there wasn't a lot of food out there. Now we have food at our fingertips. We can go to any fast food restaurant, grocery store, we can go to a friend's house, ravage their fridge and pantry, and we have just much more process easy foods at our fingertips. It's much easier to overeat now than it was centuries ago. And basically with that, weight gain happens when our body consumes more calories than it burns. As a result, our bodies store those excess calories in the form of fat. A surplus of calories can increase the number of fat cells as well as their size. And the big problem comes with processed foods. When we choose processed foods, we're putting a lot of additives and chemicals and toxins into our body and our body doesn't understand what these are. It doesn't know how to process those foods. The more toxins we put in our body, the more potential there is for things to go wrong. It's so important not only to consume the right number of calories, but to also consume the right foods for your health as well as your weight loss. So how do you combat this? How do you combat not losing weight? How do you make sure you're in a calorie deficit? Because that's the only way to lose weight. Avoid calorie dense processed foods, move your body a little bit more, and basically consume fewer calories overall. Consume less calories than you're taking in. That is what makes up a calorie deficit. It's easier said than done, but I promise you it can be done. You have to understand the simple math that comes with losing weight and gaining weight. Basic researchers have said that one pound of stored body fat equals about 3,500 calories. So let's say that you cut 500 calories per day from your calorie goal. We wanna be in a mild to moderate calorie deficit. We definitely don't want to be in an extreme calorie deficit. So 250 to 500 calories cut per day is pretty normal. Unless you have a lot of weight to lose, you can lean more towards 500 to 750 calories off of your calorie goal in order to lose weight. But let's stick with removing 500 calories from your maintenance calories. That's 500 calories times seven days a week, and that equals 3,000 
500 calories. So logically, you should lose on average one pound per week by cutting 500 calories per day. Now, if you're thinking, I don't wanna cut 500 calories a day, I'm going to be starving. Well, there's another way to lose weight and that is to move your body more. Theoretically, if you burned 200 calories a day in exercise or moving your body, then you only have to cut 300 calories per day to see the same 3,500 calories at the end of the week or the same one pound of weight loss. You'll still end up with a calorie deficit. You just will be able to eat more to lose weight. So this seems pretty simple, right? Simple math, but there's more to the equation. Our body burns calories and energy just living day to day. It uses calories to power your life, to pump your blood, to help you breathe, to digest your food, grow your muscles, do a simple crossword puzzle and more. Now the amount of calories that you need just to sustain your living is what we call your BMR or your basal metabolic rate or your TDEE, your total daily energy expenditure. This is what your body needs just to live. This isn't taking into account any added movement. So if you're someone that walks a lot or has a strenuous job or you work out on a regular basis, this doesn't include that. This is important because we never, and I repeat, never ever want to eat below our BMR or our basal metabolic rate. Like I said, that's what your body needs just to live, not to do any movement during the day. You want to make sure that you are eating above your BMR. I will link a very accurate BMR calculator down in the description box for you. I also, of course, do personalized macros and calories, but check your BMR and make sure you're never eating under that. You always want to be eating over your BMR. The reality check is the simple math to lose weight isn't all that it's cracked up to be. It's actually much more complicated than that. As we lose weight, our body's energy needs change. Someone who weighs more is going to require more calories or more energy than someone who weighs less. The pounds that came off so easy in the beginning can become increasingly harder as you continue on your weight loss journey. The slowdown or the plateau can really just take the wind out of your sails and often is destructive for people. People stop their weight loss plan or stop eating healthy because they figure why bother if I'm just going to maintain my weight or even gain weight. That's why it's important to work on establishing healthy eating habits. Have a healthy relationship with food even is even more important than calories in, calories out. Never want to feel restricted or deprived. This is going to lead to binging. If you are someone that struggles with binge eating, or if you're someone that's been a chronic dieter, maybe it's time to reconsider and just focus on getting a healthier relationship with food versus tracking every calorie and macro. Every one of us is different and we're all in different places in our lives and our weight loss journey. Make sure that whatever you're doing is serving you. And if it's not, then it's time to rethink your weight loss methods. Focus on nourishing your body rather than depriving it. Replace your calorie bombs with healthier options. Make sure that you're not spending calories on empty things like sugary drinks or energy drinks. Make sure that you're drinking lots of water. You're moving your body more. You're choosing whole real food for the majority of what you're consuming every day and that you're eating a balanced diet without restriction or elimination. So the number one cause of weight gain you ask is eating more calories than you burn. Taking yourself out of a calorie deficit and putting yourself into a calorie surplus. You have to know how many calories you should be eating every day for maintenance so that you can deduct the 500 or you need to have your macros and calories done where a new nutritionist or a weight loss coach can put you into a healthy calorie deficit. If you're interested in any of these services, they are linked down in the description box, along with all of my favorite healthy things. I will also put the lose it app. That is my favorite app for tracking calories. And the bottom line of today's video is to make sure that you're eating in a moderate or mild calorie deficit that you're not restricting or eliminating, moving your body more, drinking your water, and you should see the weight come off in a slow and steady and sustainable way. So if you enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful, give it a big, huge thumbs up. And if you're new or you haven't yet subscribed, I would love to have you here. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell right next to it so you never miss a single video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you next time.